it matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know it matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know what you ask depends on what you know what you ask depends on what you know hallelujah a buffet can be prepared in front of you and out of fear or whatever it is you may not even know that anything you ask on that table will be given to you even if you want little of everything but you can sit down there salivating and you are angry and the buffet was made for you you can take water take juice and you're just watching and everything is all things are yours but you only ask according to knowledge the prayer for light is a powerful prayer because you only arise and shine in this kingdom when your light comes when your light comes what you ask for is a picture of your mentality what you ask for i told you years ago that pat robertson of blessed memory now i watched one of his broadcasts and i remember hearing him pray and he said as a little child that when he was about to start ministry he asked the lord for three things one wisdom two favor three the anointing of the holy spirit i said wow so these are the spiritual resources that would turn an ordinary man to rise and have a global broadcast station i went to god i started changing the things i was asking for lord in a similar vein give me wisdom give me favor give me the anointing of the holy spirit i'm glad that i asked that i'm still asking that until today because it can be in measure jesus increased in wisdom jesus increased in favor yesterday's dimension of wisdom may not be able to confront tomorrow's challenges and so my asking remains but i ask because i know that god is abba pata his father he's a giver and that the quality of fathers is that they give without withholding provided it will not destroy you he said, ye have not, because ye ask not. Many of you have not been able to ask for help because you don't know the value of help. You've not asked for wisdom because you've not learned the value of wisdom. You've not asked for knowledge because you've not seen the value of light. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Is someone learning? This is very powerful. From the time you realize the ability to change your mindset, your perception, and the ability to ask, your predicaments remain your fault. Not God's fault, not the fault of yesterday, not the fault of your foundation. Can I give you the eighth observation? Now we get to Peter finally. Acts chapter 3 and verse 4 or 6. Let's try 6. Okay, well, 4 is fine. So finally, we get to the point in the story where Peter arrives. I hope you know that Peter had been seeing that man every day because they went to pray every day and the man was laid there every day. But on this certain day, the Bible says, back down to verse 3, please. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple? Now, please look up. The fact that Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have. What did the man see in these two people that made him isolate everybody to ask these two? Because they clearly, that they said, they, maybe they dress well, I don't know. But seeing the right people was the God factor in this miracle. How do you isolate two people out of a crowd of people thronging in to pray? There are things only God can do. But when your mindset, the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. The miracle could not come until his mentality changed. Let me say that again. The mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. Don't you bother about the ability. That is God's business. But the mentality... Is your responsibility the ability to prosper cannot come from you 
but the mentality to prosper knowing its purpose and its dynamics is your responsibility increase church growth that one is not your business it is God that brings the increase but the mentality to be a pastor after God's heart a teaching priest to love to teach to lay down your life for your sheep that one is your own responsibility can I tell you the truth when mentality is intact power will not be deficient when mentality is intact power will not be deficient back to verse 3 let's connect the dots now who seeing Peter seeing Peter I like this was he not seeing them every day there is a kind of seeing God had walked upon his mind he had partnered with God looking at the beautiful gate can I tell you the truth the beautiful gate is training you to see Peter <laughs> the beautiful gate if you know how to draw lessons you know how to train yourself at the beautiful gate then you are ready to see Peter and John the company will come one day but you must learn to see things a certain way the anointing the lifting will come if you cannot appreciate the beautiful gate it cannot talk it cannot speak it can't lay hands but there is a reason why God kept leading the people to drop the man there in front of the beautiful gate seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple he asked them for arms at least let's give him credit he's known how to start asking at least he's known now that when you are silent your life goes the direction of your silence he's begun to open his mouth and take responsibility at least he's learned now that for everyone that asketh, he receiveth. Verse 4. Do you know that Peter's first assignment was not to be a miracle worker? Peter's first assignment was to be a teaching priest. Let me show you Peter's sermon. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Verse 5. And he gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them verse 6 and Peter said silver and gold I do not have but why are you only asking for silver and gold have you been taught that there are other things you can ask for let me help you you can ask that a name come to you and cause you to rise up and walk that there are other requests that are nobler than asking for silver and gold. That was Peter's sermon. The man never knew that you could ask beyond silver and gold. The man never knew that if you ask beyond silver and gold, it will still be granted. Why ask for silver and gold when the power to rise up and walk that even cause you needing the silver and gold can still be solved? Why ask for rent alone when God can give you wisdom? Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. understand you praying for a job but have you tried praying for destiny helpers do you not know that that table can also offer you that you keep a job for me or you keep destiny helpers I will choose destiny helpers a thousand times because when you find the heart of a man he also opens his hands towards you listen I know you have been asking but I'm teaching you by this mystery that your asking is a product of your mentality. Some of you have been asking God for things. He's committed to answering. But how long will you keep collecting silver and gold when there is the ability to rise up and walk? The Bible says he asked Peter. That was his day. That was his moment. Peter said, if I leave this man this way, 
I've not validated my apostolic ministry and I will give you pastors according to my heart. They will help to re-edit the things you ask so that you will ask of things that have weightier spiritual value. Weightier spiritual value. Instead of asking for church members, ask for the anointing. Genuine anointing to be a blessing. Genuine power to convey the word of God with fire and light. With signs following. You have asked for a congregation you don't have space for. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Oh, rest on me. Some of you, every miracle service, here's your list. Not to insult you, but to show you you need to grow. God, give me a car. A car? Let somebody deposit one million or ten million in my bank account. Don't laugh at the man. Many of you are just like him. You are asking. You pray for hours. But the things you are asking do not have weight in the spirit. You are asking for very small things. People are asking for nations. People are asking for territories. Men like John Knox said, give me Scotland. A, a whole territory. Give me Scotland. They were apportioning nations and taking it by faith. Father, as I go for this meeting, I'm praying. Please let me not be ashamed. Let at least one person be healed. Please let people know I am called. And God says, this is all. Whereas there are people saying, Lord, place a grace upon my life that will cause kings and nobles to come from every nation like the queen of Sheba to come and hear the wisdom of the spirit that nations will be saved in one day. Man of God, stop asking for mundane things. Ask for things that pertain unto power. Ask for spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. The capital that buys influence. The capital that buys money. The capital that buys time. The capital that buys the loyalty of men. The capital that buys longevity. Superior graces. This is what champions pray for in the spirit. Are we together? Please sit down. So Peter was teaching the man. Peter taught him that what he was asking for was not the only thing available to be received. This was Peter's sermon. Peter saw the condition of that man. Look at me. Do you know for a long time, I taught as I read my Bible, I've grown myself. Many years I've read this scripture, I don't know how many times. But I thought Peter saying silver and gold I do not have was a degradation to himself. I used to think so. That Peter meant I don't have money in my pocket. Oh shame Peter. Until I found out that what Peter was saying is I've gone to a realm where I don't need to have silver and gold. I've, 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 I have other superior spiritual resources. If I am called an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask me for silver and gold, you didn't place enough demand on that grace. What is silver and gold? That's what Peter was saying. I used to think years ago that it was a sign of poverty. No, no, no. It was not a sign of poverty, ladies and gentlemen. Not the early church. He was showing that there is a realm a man can be in 
Are we together? It's a grace for sufficiency. Where you command, when God makes you a captain over his inheritance. Everywhere you go, there are resources that wait for you. Because there is a grace that commands it. And he said, please sir, give me silver and gold. And he said, young man, there are things that were given to us by Jesus. He didn't give us silver and gold. No, not after three and a half years of mentorship by the Messiah. If at the end of Jesus' mentorship, all he did was share money and go to heaven, he failed. Are we together? Silver and gold, I do not have. But don't be discouraged. It doesn't mean I don't have. It just means I don't have those mundane things. I have something superior. This that I have is what I give. Every man gives what he has. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Rise up and thrive. Rise up and excel. Rise up and move to new prophetic horizons. He says, such as I have, this is what I have. I cannot give you silver and gold. Thieves can steal it. It can perish. You can lose it. You can be careless. You can invest wrongly and the money will go. But there is something I can give you that no man can take from you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I give you the ability, he said. It's an ability. It's not just a proclamation. I place upon your life, he's saying, an ability to rise up and walk. Listen, rise up and walk means rise up above your yesterday. Rise up above your foundations. He did not just say walk. You cannot walk until you rise up. Nobody walks seated. You can crawl when you sit. But the first condition to walk is to rise up. I impart upon you stamina, he says, to look at yesterday and not let it swallow you again. I do something to your mindset and impart grace upon you. That was what Peter gave the man. Don't ask me for silver and gold. Don't just ask me for money to pay rent. That may solve a temporal problem. But you are the first person in your family out of 20 people. You need more than silver and gold. What you need is the ability to rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Walk out of where? Listen, look at me. Let me tell you another way of saying rise up and walk. Are you ready? Lazarus, come forth. Because you don't bury a dead man standing. Lazarus, even though you are dead, come forth. Lazarus had to rise up. And the Bible says he came out even though with grave clothes. He came out. The man in Acts chapter 3 was not the first man to rise up and walk. The disciples had seen many people rise up and walk. They saw the widow at Nain. They saw her son rise up and walk. They seen many people rise up and walk. Let me tell you, it takes stamina to rise up. It takes grace to rise up. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1. And the Spirit entered me, verse 2, it says, When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Rise up and walk is an impartation. Rise up and walk is a release of grace. That is time for you to stop crying, sitting in self-pity. Rise up and walk. Is someone learning? Listen to me. Knowledge is what makes your praying, your asking most rewarding. Knowledge is what makes your praying and your asking most rewarding. The man kept asking for arms. He would have dropped five or ten shekels. He would have said thank you, but he would have remained there. 
One thing I know for sure is that if that man did not receive the ability to rise up and walk, according to the law of men, his helpers would have been tired one day. Provided they are men, because the Bible says even the youth will be weary. There are times your greatest helpers, your helpers are ushers until you meet the helper. They help you to meet the helper. When you meet the helper, don't waste that opportunity. Rise up and walk is better than begging for arms, begging for silver and gold. Write this down. The ninth observation, and then I pull a few things together and we pray. The ninth observation from this scripture. Are you ready? Verse 7. Give us 7 please. The Bible says Peter came after educating him and said such as I have verse 6 give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Verse 7 was a shock to me. Because if you don't read well, you will think the guy obeyed. He did not obey. He wanted to, but something kept him down. He couldn't stand. And so the power of God could not move. Do you know how embarrassing it would be that after coming to teach the truth, nothing but the truth, you now tell people rise up and walk and there are no testimonies. This was what happened in Peter's conference. After telling the man rise up and walk, by the next Sunday there was no testimony in this instance. Two weeks later, no testimony. And Peter says something is wrong. Let's go back to the drawing board. And he found out that the name of Jesus, as powerful as it is, but without a step of faith from the one wanting to receive, remains impotent. Even though it was the real Jesus, but because the man did not take any action of faith, the name, the power of God was present to heal as you will see shortly. And Peter said, let me help him. And he took him by the right hand, helping him to act and lifted him up. The Bible says immediately, the power was waiting for obedience. The power was waiting for obedience immediately. My God. So if the man sat down there for two more weeks, the power will wait there for two more weeks. And it will look as if the word, the name of Jesus did not carry power. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received. What received? When God opened my eyes to see this, I thought it was only a human being who receives with the mind. Look at what the Bible says received. That a man's feet can receive. A man's ankle can receive. A man's finances can receive. A man, every part of a man's life can receive. It did not say the man. It says his feet and his ankle receive strength. Receive strength. And immediately, verse, verse, verse 8 now, the Bible says, He leaping, leaping, he stood up and he walked. I hope you know that even the walking is a miracle. It's not only the healing that was a miracle. He had never walked in his life. Mommy, if you give birth to a baby who rolls from the hospital bed, and just when you think the baby is going to fall, you just see the baby stand and says, good morning, mommy. You will call it reincarnation and run out of that place. Are we together? Even Jesus did not walk as a baby. So for the man to have risen, and then the Bible says he leaping stood and walked. This is very powerful. He leaping stood and walked. Write this down, please, everyone. The name of Jesus without faith on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The name of Jesus without faith 
on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The name of Jesus without faith, obedience on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The power of God only moved when the man moved. The power of God only moved when the man moved. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of God only moved when the man moved. When men take actions of faith, the power of God and all the resources of heaven are released to back them. The power of God only moved when the man moved. Are we together? Now, let me summarize a few things for you. You can write now. Rise up and walk, number one, is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new prophetic seasons. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call. It's not just a caption of a message. It's a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons. To open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons. To open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny. And if you wish to add, to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits. To step into new horizons of kingdom exploits. Rise up and walk again. It's a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons. To step into new chapters concerning your life and destiny. To step into new horizons of kingdom exploits. That's the first summary of this entire discourse. It's important for you to not just be excited, but to understand what God is doing here. Rise up and walk is a call that you have remained at a level spiritually, financially. You have remained at a level. There's still an old chapter lingering around your life. And God is challenging you to rise to new horizons. For someone, rise up and walk can mean step into the next chapter of your calling. For someone, rise up and walk can mean make notable progress and advancement. Void of excuses. For someone, rise up and walk can mean press to know God at a deeper level. For someone, rise up and walk can mean contend for higher levels of grace. Whatever that means to you, the message tonight is rise up and walk. Do not give flimsy excuses again. You've prayed for too many sick people and there's nobody who is killed. Stop giving excuses. You have the power to see and you have the power to ask. Ask for the ancient parts. There are jars of this oil of healing loitering around the body of Christ. When you are hungry enough and even humble to be carried, one day you will meet Peter. One day you will meet John. And the day you meet them, don't ask for silver and gold. Ask for the ability to rise up and walk. Are we together? The first summary is that God is calling us. Hmm. As I prepared my notes, I took out time to pray for myself. And I said, Lord, thank you for what you have done in my life. But I'll be the first recipient of this message. Thank God for the level of the anointing you have brought me. But it's time for us to do business in deep waters. Rise up and walk. It's time to take nations. It's time to celebrate weightier testimonies. Manifestations of the hand of God. Are we together now? Yes. You are a man of God here. It's time to press for greater levels of accuracy. It's time to contend for the faith. It's time to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. 
participate, partner with God to stop men from doubting whether you are called or not. Tell yourself, I will never go for any meeting and afterwards, people are just escorting you out because you are a total waste of their time. As they share the grace, they have to apologize for bringing you because you came and said nonsense and wasted time. Summary number two. The mentality to rise up and walk is your own part, your own responsibility. While the ability to rise up and walk is God's part. I'm summarizing this discussion now. Then I release that grace upon you. I'm summarizing this discussion. Haven't shown you about nine observations by the Spirit as the light from this story. Summary number one is that to rise up and walk is a prophetic call. It's a call to be tired of your call. He will supply your responsibility to labor in the spirit. To submit yourself to, to learning, labor, and the of correcting your perception of having a higher most mentality. While the ability to, while you wait for the hand of God to be revealed in your life, while you wait for the hand of God to be revealed in your life, labor through the word to build the mentality that both attracts and preserves the miracle. While you wait for the moment, the period, the time when the hand of God will be revealed, like the man waited for when he will meet with Peter or John or any representative of the power of God for that matter, you have a responsibility to labor through the word, labor through the word to build the mentality that can attract and preserve the miracle. While you are waiting for the destiny helper to be used by God to help your finances, Buy the truth, buy books, listen to the sermons, get the mentality that will make you not to waste 10 million, make you not to waste 100 million. It is not when the money arrives, you start learning what to do with it. I told you, the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. And that is not God's responsibility. So the man was being kept at the beautiful gate as a clue by the spirit. Son, it may not have been your, your own making, your own fault, but keep learning how to look. I place the beautiful gate before you to start helping you know that if you can focus on the beautiful gate, you will be able to focus on Peter and John when you see them. And that when you learn to fasten your eyes on them, then the power of God can flow through you. While you wait for the day, you will encounter a man of God to lay hands on you. Go and learn the things that make ministry work. Go and buy books from seasoned men and women of God that can teach you how to do ministry with integrity. While you are waiting for the day, the prophetic anointing, the apostolic anointing, the teaching grace will come. Learn on character. Learn on the fruit of the Spirit. While you are waiting to receive that impartation, God will not fast for you. God will not wake up and pray for you. You obtain grace and do the enlarging of your capacity. Leave the contact of Peter and John to God. There are too many crowds. It's only God who knows the one he has placed the anointing to help you rise up and walk. There are too many people. If you are to look for Peter and John by yourself, you will look for the wrong person because what you were even looking for was wrong. In every generation, there are lepers, people, cripples, may not be physical, but people who are victims of conditions beyond their control. And right now, for many of you, you have been helped by many. Could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that Koinonia has been your gate beautiful? Every week, helpers are bringing you. Helpers are bringing you. Could it be? 
that maybe I'm the one who is standing like that bronze gate you call beautiful. I may not have the power to heal you by myself, but don't worry. In this case, it may not even be Peter and John that will come. One day, the king himself. Hmm. That power will flow through frail vessels and cause you indeed to rise up and walk. Is someone learning? Pay very quick attention. Summary number three. You need to receive the summary to understand the full text. Every manifestation, I want you to listen and write this please, very quickly. Every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God, not away from God. Write this and I'll show you something in verse 9. Every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life, every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God and not away from him. How true? Verse 9. Acts chapter 3 verse 9. Verse 8. My apologies. 8. 8. 8. Let's read it together. 1, 2, read. And he leaping stood and walked. Watch this. And entered with them into the temple. Everybody say, entered with them. Yeah. Hallelujah. He proved to God that his ability to rise up and walk was not a cause because it led him to enter the temple. Remember the story? They were going to pray, but they met a man who said, Lord, I want to pray, but I'm unclean. They will not allow me there. And God said, let me test if you really love me or you are just looking for a miracle. As soon as the man got healed, he did not have the time to run around town. The Bible says he entered into the temple. Many people on getting that miracle, they will forget God, forget Peter, forget John and be on their way back to the city. But not the certain man may not have a name but he had a testimony that he loved God keep that scripture please the Bible says he entered with them my God when my when God opened my eyes to see this I said this is it he entered into the temple walking and leaping and praising God for him it was not enough that he was healed he said I can't waste this moment I've received something right now in a moment I never imagined in my life that I would walk. I was grateful receiving arms, silver and gold. Now a miracle of miracles has happened in my life. I don't need to be carried again. I don't need to be supported again. How could I forget the God if the person who healed me was on his way to go and worship God? I would be stupid to ignore that person and the God he's going to worship. Maybe someday by worshiping him, I'll become a healer myself. And be able to heal many people sitting at many beautiful gates and the man went there the third summary every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God do you know that God is pained in his heart I tell you sincerely when believers receive of the abundant mercies of God and it draws them away from him Many believers cry unto God at the point of need. They cry unto God, Lord, save me. Open doors for me. Give me this. Give me that. And when the miracles come, they forget God. Summary number four, very quickly. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny. Listen and write. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny, realize that you owe it to give God thanks, praise, and glory. A long read, but I'll take it again. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life, upon your destiny, realize that you owe it to give God thanks, praise and glory verse 9 realize whenever you receive from God for every manifestation of his hand on your life 
every manifestation of your hand over your destiny, you owe it. It's a debt you must pay. You owe it to give God thanks. You owe it to give God praise. You owe it to give God glory. Read verse 9 as loud as you can. Ready? Read please. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. One more time. He was not silent. He was not careful. He announced it unashamedly. I am that leper. The one you knew yesterday. The one you called Ichabod. I am that destiny, that outcast. It's still me. God can transform. And he was singing. He was walking. He was praising God. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny. Realize, ladies and gentlemen, that you owe it to give God thanks, to give God praise, to give God glory. Summary number five. The fifth summary is found in verse 11 and 12. That is a lesson from Peter and John. You would think the entire lesson from the story stops at the man at Gates Beautiful. But there's something to learn from Peter and there's something to learn from John. Your learning say amen. amen. Watch this. The Bible says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. In fact, give us Amplified. KJV or Amplified. Amplified. Acts 3.11. Thank you. Now, while he still firmly clung to Peter and John, all the people in utmost amazement ran together and crowded around them in the covered porch. Solomon's porch. Now, verse 12. I like this. My God. My God. My God. My God. These are the kinds of things that will make me read one verse for days. Let's even go back to verse 11. Everybody says celebrity. Not after such a spectacular miracle. Say emoji. The Bible says the people stood in utmost amazement. That is a notable miracle. And the Bible says the crowd. Remember what they wanted to do at first. Pray out. Because of that miracle, nobody was talking prayer again. It was too spectacular. The attention shifted from prayer, from God, to those God used to perform the miracle. But the 11th or the, the final summary we learn in this discourse is found in 11 and 12. Now verse 12. And Peter, seeing it, what is the it? Seeing that the attention had shifted from God, the attention had shifted from prayer to him. He said, he answered the people, you men of Israel, why are you so surprised and wondering at this? Why do you keep staring at us as though by our own individual power or active piety, we had made this man able to walk? Can you speak like that? After such a miracle, Peter, in the midst of the crowd, the applauds, the beautiful name calling. He saw an opportunity to reveal Jesus. He said, I will not waste this. They can celebrate me and go back home and remain in their idolatry and religiosity. But I need to point them to the one who is the doer of this. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, even though you call me a superstar, hanging around me, coming around my church, coming around my conference, let me tell you the truth. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him by the Lord. It takes a lot of humility and a deep knowledge of God, deep reverence for God to stand with your result in front of you and tell people, as much as you clap for me, let me point you to Jesus. I cannot end such a powerful miracle, such a discussion without showing you this. Why do you keep staring at us as though it were by our own power or might, this man has been able to walk. And if you read down to verse 18, we're not reading there for the sake of time, but he used every opportunity to reveal Jesus. He began to talk about Jesus. You see that now? 
shared the whole story about Jesus and the people were open to receive. They couldn't deny the message. I like the apostles. Every opportunity they found was an opportunity for them to turn the attention of men. I confess to you that as a generation we have failed in this area. We're a superstar generation with a passion to let men see us. Doesn't necessarily mean we are bad. It's just something we have to be aware of. When a man who was crippled from his mother's womb stands by your ministry, stands by your hand, stands by your apostleship, stands by your knowing God, stands from your crusade, let me tell you the truth. It takes the fear of God and reverence for God that while the people are clapping and singing your songs and singing your praises, as you enjoy all the applauds, you must be like Peter. The Bible says when Peter saw it, he knew that this had gone out of proportion. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, even in the midst of this great result, I am not ashamed to confess to you that it is not by my power or the might of my hand. That could cost him his relevance. That could cost him his sense of influence, honor. But he would rather decrease for Jesus to increase. Did you hear what I said? He would rather decrease for Jesus to increase. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Every opportunity you find, every opportunity to be used by God to bring miracles, to bring healings, to bring liftings, to bring prosperity, to connect men to their destiny, to teach them the word, to raise a people for God. The moment God uses you mightily and the nations begin to celebrate you, remember the song that has become our anthem in this place, that until the nations see Jesus beyond Joshua Selman, that must become your from your life, that your intention is not to give him glory. You are just saying that as a religious cliche. So it does not look like you are stealing out God's glory. My passion has always been, and for the rest of my life will remain, this passionate desire to truly see the nation, see what God can do. First through men, but that it transfers glory back to him. That the nations praise God because you are alive. The nations will praise God because you are a preacher. Praise God because you are a businessman. Praise God for the prophetic upon your life. Praise God for the apostolic ministry. Undeniable, unusual dimensions of grace. That when you submit yourself to prayer and intercession. And God through your intercessory ministry open doors for people. As they celebrate you, the blessings will come to you. They will sow into your life. They will appreciate you. They will recommend you. That's your blessing for serving God. But make sure, make sure that in all your doing you will point men to him while you are pointing men to him people will say keep quiet if you point men to him what do you have now as your own share let me tell you the truth be satisfied when he's glorified through your life that is a noble reward very noble reward i'm going to be speaking prophetically over your life back to verse 6 amplified whilst you are seated lay your hands on your head in one minute and decree and declare it's time to rise up and walk acts chapter 3 and verse 6 something very heavy is coming on someone now the ability to rise up and walk can i have amplified classic is that possible if i can have amplified classic else just go back to kjv Please lay your hands and pray. Everyone. AMPC, you don't have that? If there's no AMPC, that's fine. Just. Shabala sabre saladev shabas. It's time to rise up and walk. To rise up and walk in ministry. To rise up and walk new spiritual horizons faith for unusual dimensions faith for extraordinary dimensions faith for extraordinary exploits 
exploits that dumbfound principalities and powers that reveals God so mightily in the world of men. Someone take a minute to pray. As you receive this impartation tonight, Prasasiman Takala Barandos Kavriyash. Hallelujah. When you read verse 6 from Amplified Classic, it says, Begin now to walk and go on walking. It says, In the name of Jesus, begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now. That means you may not have started, but begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now to walk and then go on walking. Hallelujah. Rise up and walk can mean get back your prayer altar. Get back your passion for the word. It can mean rise to a new level. It can mean get to the more lands to conquer. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Let me give you two scriptures and then I'll speak over your life. Quickly, Joshua chapter 13 and 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto them, listen Koinonia, thou art old and stricken in age, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. There's no time to plateau in the spirit. The level of healing you have seen is not all there is. The level of the prophetic you have seen is not all there is. The level of the apostolic you have seen, in fact, is child's play compared to what is obtainable in the spirit. The level of wealth you have seen is not all there is to be seen. One more scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 2, 24 and 25. Very powerful scripture. It says, rise ye up. Take your journey and pass over river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon, the Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land. Then he says, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. I have given you, but begin to possess. Verse 25. 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heavens who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. I have given you, but begin to possess. I have given you that ministry. I have given you Abuja. I have given you Nigeria. I have given you Port Harcourt. I have given you Joss. I have given you Maiduguri. I have given you every sphere, but begin to possess it. A call to do more for the kingdom a call to rise to new horizons let me tell you this listen I've worked with God a bit and I have certain seasons in my life called defining moments physical calendar seasons where by my work with God God calls me it's like a solemn assembly I'm called by God and every time those seasons come exact seasons in the year three of them every year three major seasons that define moments in my life and in this apostolic and prophetic work and every time those seasons come and god calls me that that call that solemn assembly i know that it is a time for new wine it's a time for pruning and chastisement. It's a time to open other assignments. The major assignments in this ministry have come within those seasons. Whether it is Koinonia Abuja, Global Expansion, Sound of Revival, whatever it is. And so when those seasons come, I am usually very sensitive because I know it is time to rise up and walk. For someone, you may not have those seasons like me, but today, now that you have heard that word, that is your own season. In ministry, 
God is saying, if you continue this way, you can't do much for the kingdom. Are we together? You can't preach incoherent, disoriented sermons. You are standing and just talking and people don't even understand what you are saying. It's time to rise for mastery. In fact, if you can, I recommend that you listen to the teachings, two sessions that we had in UK just a few months. Come up here, go to Koinonia Global and you get them there. It can add to this teaching that you have received. Come up here, two sessions, a morning session and a night session. I teach there two profound principles. It's important to not plateau. Sometimes when I see people satisfied where they are, satisfied with the level of the healing anointing, satisfied with the level of their prophetic, you know, um, administration, satisfied with the apostolic. No, there is no plateauing for the believer. So God is calling someone tonight that it's time to rise up and walk rise up above challenges rise up above limitations cultural limitations territorial limitations for someone rise up above the grip of spirits they've held everybody around you you can't keep giving excuses not when light has come you have the ability to see you have the ability to ask in prayer you even have the humility to be carried and by the grace of god there are men who love you enough to carry you through that hurdle he says, by you I can run through a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. Stop giving excuses that the fence is too high. Why don't you rest in the everlasting arm of the king? The one who can lift you. Man of God, it's time to step into the new anointing. The excuses you have been given about the anointing is too flimsy. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. There is power to be obtained in this end time. The oil is still dripping, flowing to as many who are hungry, to as many who are thirsty, not to men of God, but to hungry people. The spirit of revelation is still flowing. It's like a river flowing from the throne to as many who are thirsty, come and drink, that you drink and from your belly will flow that river of living water do you know there are dimensions of healing that God still wants to bring and some to restore to the body of Christ there are apostolic dimensions our generation has not seen that God wants to trap in men and reveal again there are prophetic dimensions God wants to reveal there are dimensions of wealth and financial stewardship that God wants to bring We are going to pray. Whether you are sitting, whether you are standing, it does not matter. Can I give you one minute? Please cry to God. Cry. I don't know how you are going to cry to God. Don't waste this. It's an opportunity to rise up and walk. Go ahead and pray. Cry to God. Cry to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Pray, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hey, glory be to God. glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. I want you to receive this from the depth of your heart like fire from heaven right now upon as many who are hungry to receive this grace that is higher than silver and gold I stretch my hands as God has granted the grace to bring this truth to you I speak to someone 
the grace that causes men to rise up and walk. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Higher spiritual dimensions. Receive it right now. Higher prophetic dimensions. Shapakatos kata. Ebratos kata. Receive it right now. The spirit of revelation at a higher dimension. Receive it right now. The grace for prayer and supplication. Receive it right now. I activate your prophetic encounters at a frequency you have never seen. I speak to you spiritually rise up and walk financially rise up and walk in your career rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and, up and run rise up and fly rise up and soar rise up and break limits rise up and break boundaries in the name of Jesus rise up and do what has never been done rise up and surpass ordinary standards in the mighty name of Jesus the spirit that comes into men and causes them to rise and to fly in destiny I have made that grace rest upon you May that unction rest upon you. May that increase in that anointing. Let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. And everything keeping you down. In spite of the fact that Peter and John. God's vessels. Are already within your vicinity. And yet there are things keeping you down. I don't care what they are. I crush them for your sake forever. I crush them for your sake forever. In the name of Jesus. And I declare over someone. We don't know how old that man was. We were not given the privilege to know how long his condition was. But one thing we know is that from a baby to an adult is at least 18 years when that man was met we do not see him carrying any semblance of a baby the bible will identify young men as young men like the rich young ruler but this man certainly was not a young man so it is safe to assume that from birth until the time was at least 18 years i don't know how long your challenges have lasted there is a word I want to introduce to your life is the word immediately the Bible says immediately you would think the longevity of the trouble the calamity would make his healing be gradual but the Bible says immediately another word for immediately is speedy manifestation that is my prophetic word over you let there be speedy manifestations let there be speedy manifestations speedy manifestations of prophecy speedy manifestations of grace of favor of lifting of new levels of a new chapter in the name of jesus please hear me for some of you, as you return, as you come for the miracle service, you are not just going to come to testify. You are going to come to draw those who will come and testify. Because I am not only standing as Peter and John. I am releasing upon you, now that you have arisen, in the name of Jesus, be Peter and John to someone else. I say it again, be Peter and John to a family. 
be Peter and John to a business be Peter and John to a ministry agents of change careers of the anointing conduits of spiritual possibilities in the name of Jesus that as you come for the miracle service next week for some of you whole families will follow you listen the Bible says the man who was healed clung to Peter he went wherever Peter went in the name of Jesus by reason of this grace I forbid you from coming to the house of God alone your impact in the life of families will be too significant for them to watch you go to church alone in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise wave your hands give him all the praise give him all the glory don't be tired of waving your hands